In the late 1980s, Pat Patterson devised an idea of a match similar to a battle royal referred to as the Royal Rumble match. Before it became one of the most exciting matches of each year, the Royal Rumble was simply a random battle royal with no strings attached to it. You go in, you win, and we'll see you tomorrow. In 1988, the inaugural Royal Rumble match took place. Or did it? Despite being a test match at a non-televised house show, the first ever Royal Rumble match actually took place in 1987, where it was won by the man who became the runner-up in the first televised Rumble match, One Man Gang. Also, the first ever Royal Rumble event took place as a televised event on the USA Network rather than on pay-per-view, mainly because WWF didn't think it would be that great. I saw a rule about the elimination stating that if any other body part is outside the ring upon going over the top rope, you are eliminated as well. I'm guessing that rule was ignored, otherwise how do you explain Kofi Kingston's handstand in 2012 being ignored by officials? Since there are no disqualifications in the Royal Rumble match, I can understand certain situations, though I myself find it unfair that an elimination caused by someone who is not a participant in the match is valid. If that guy was not even in the match, then from the book's point of view, it should say that the participant eliminated himself. In 1992, for the first time ever, the WWF Championship was up for grabs in the Royal Rumble match when the title was vacated. Since the reward of getting a title shot at WrestleMania didn't exist at the time, I can let it slide. But in 2016, the WWE Championship was to be defended in the Royal Rumble match after 23 years of an even greater reason to win the Rumble. Speaking of unusual situations, both Lex Luger and Bret the Hitman Hart got eliminated from the Royal Rumble match and after continuous back and forth arguing, they were both deemed the winner and both got a title shot at WrestleMania 10 that year. In 2005, the same thing happened with John Cena and Batista, except for the fact that the match was restarted. What's ironic is they both ended up receiving title matches that same WrestleMania, regardless of the restart. So why didn't they just restart the match back in 1994 or something? Stone Cold Steve Austin won his first of what would become three Royal Rumble matches in 1997, despite already getting eliminated by Bret Hart. Kind of a good thing he was denied his title match because of that situation, but regardless. The same thing happened in 2000 when The Rock had won the Royal Rumble match, despite his feet hitting the ground first before The Big Show did. Even Vince McMahon himself won the Royal Rumble match in 1999, but he decided to give up his title opportunity at WrestleMania 15, thus making the 1999 match completely pointless. Winners of the Royal Rumble can also defend their title opportunity if there's someone else who wants a title shot. Enough said. If you won the Royal Rumble, you shouldn't have to defend that title shot at all. In 2006, Rey Mysterio lasted over 60 minutes to become the longest-running participant in a single Rumble match, and he ended up losing his title opportunity to Randy Orton. Despite losing his title opportunity, he was reinserted into the match five days later on SmackDown. I don't know if I should send the fact that he put his title opportunity on the line, or the fact that he still competed for the title at WrestleMania despite losing his opportunity. The original time slot between each entry was two minutes, but later shortened to just a minute and a half, likely because people were getting bored of having to wait two minutes for 28 other entries. There have even been times that a wrestler was assaulted beforehand, thus never entering the match. I'm thinking to myself, that ain't fair to the one who lost his opportunity because someone prevented it, and that person should at least compete in another match to earn a shot at the title. Sounds to me that WWE has an obsession of putting the Royal Rumble event in San Antonio, Texas during a year with the number 7 in it, since it's hosted the 1997, 2007, and now 2017 event. I'm calling it now that the event will be held in San Antonio in 2027, when I'm likely retired from doing the sin videos. In 1995, WWF really wanted to rush through the Royal Rumble match by having each entrant come out every 60 seconds and having the wrestlers get eliminated quickly. The match went on for 38 minutes, becoming the shortest Royal Rumble with 30 entrants. In 2009, Santino Morella broke the record of shortest time in the Royal Rumble match. Unfortunately, as I mentioned this before, he did not last 1.9 seconds as WWE says he did. The real time was 2.1 seconds, which was still a millisecond or two below the Warlords record held in 1989. WWE was just desperate to break records, even if it meant lying in the record books of how the record was broken. Multiple gimmicks of a wrestler are allowed in the Royal Rumble match, as Mick Foley appeared three times in the 1998 Royal Rumble under his three faces of Foley. Makes me wonder why Stardust then returned to the Royal Rumble as Cody Rhodes, while I could enter the Royal Rumble as Christian Marico and reappear as Hunter Bain later on. As far as WWE is concerned, the 2004 Royal Rumble doesn't even exist because of its winner. In some ways, I don't blame them for not mentioning the winner of the match, but making it seem like the match never existed is going a little too far. Despite the Royal Rumble winners getting a title shot at WrestleMania since 1993, only 48% have actually won the championships, which is something I find hilarious to think about. The decade of the 2010s have not been a great decade for Royal Rumble matches so far. 
mainly due to its possible lack of stars or the fact that wrestlers who have already won a Royal Rumble match has won three of the past four Royal Rumble matches. I swear to God, they better not do that in 2017 too, making it four of the past five. Surprise entrants are always fun to think about in the Royal Rumble match, but in 2012, WWE kinda went overboard by having almost one third of the entrants be surprise entrants. To me, one, two, or three is fine, but not fucking eight. Oh yeah, forgot to mention that fucking commentators competed in the Royal Rumble match too. If that could happen, how come Howard Finkel did make an appearance in the Rumble or a random fan in the front row too? In 2011, WWE expanded the Royal Rumble to 40 participants, mainly to allow two large stables to be in the match. And about 30% of the match was the stables dominating one entrant after the other and making me check the time to see how long we had left. Good thing they went back to 30. If you jump the gun before your entrant number occurs, you are disqualified, as demonstrated by Finlay in 2008. While that is the case, people say Finlay was disqualified because he uses shillelagh, which is obviously inaccurate. Also, while weapons have been used in so many Royal Rumble matches, Finlay used his and they say he got disqualified for that. Their argument is his use of a foreign object, which is a stupid comeback considering a kendo stick is also a foreign object and yet no one got disqualified from using that. With the exception of Alberto Del Rio and Roman Reigns at the time, 8 of the past 10 winners of the Royal Rumble have been wrestlers who were already multiple time world champions and Wrestlemania headliners. Which is why I'm hoping that uprising stars start winning Royal Rumble matches as it's an opportunity to headline Wrestlemania. Also, a lot of the time the Royal Rumble winner does not headline Wrestlemania. As a matter of fact, out of the 23 winners that received title opportunities in the main event of Wrestlemania, 15 of them have actually been in the main event of Wrestlemania that year. The previous eight have either not competed for the title, was in the mid card of the event, or this makes me vomit in my mouth. They fucking opened the show instead of headlined it. That's all I got for the Royal Rumble match sins. If there's any sins about the Royal Rumble match concept that I may have missed, put them down in the comments. Though they officially will not be counted in this video, I'm always interested to see what you could find as well. And for anyone giving me sins for the Royal Rumble match from 2017 onward, just so you know that this video was created before that and thus don't give me shit about it.